Hello everyone, my name is Manuel Piet. I'm with VMware Tech Marketing. And in this video, I will show you some basics how you can start with the uh, SaltStack beacons. I will show you in detail how you can set up the configuration for your beacon, how you can deploy the beacon, and finally, how you can validate if the beacon is working. To start this, we have to log in into the SaltStack config UI and create a configuration and a state file. For this, we enter the saltstack config file server, which can be found on the left hand side under config file server. So click the create button if you don't have an empty screen on the right, and then fill the environment, fill the path name, and then enter some code. We start with the configuration file. For the configuration file, just select your environment, in my case it's space, and enter a path name. So make it a meaningful path name like beaconfilesbeacon.conf and then have a look on the content of the configuration file. The configuration file contains the name of the beacon and the parameters which are important to run the beacon. A beacon in the end is nothing else than a Python script which is executed on your target machine. So, the configuration of the beacon starts with the keyword beacons, then followed by the name of the beacon, which is mem usage in our case, which is monitoring the memory utilization of your machine. And when the machine is uh, memory utilization is crossing a threshold, then an event is created on the master. So the threshold here is set to 10%. So here the parameter name is percent. And then we add one more parameter, which is disabled during state run, which is just disabling the beacon while you apply a different state. Last but not least, save this file and we continue with the state file. For the state file creation, same again, go into the config file server tab and click the create button. So you get a new empty screen. We will create a state file like this. So we, we fill again the environment, in our case it's here base, and we give it again a path name, which is in the same folder structure as our configuration file. Pay attention on the ending of your file. It's .sls and the config file was .conf. All right, so let's have a look on the content of the state file. So the state file has like a few different uh, contents here. So it's, st it's starting with the name of the executed task. So you can give it any name you want as long as it's meaningful to you when you look into the log. So install beacon for me is a very meaningful uh, task name. So we call it install beacon. Then on the second line, we use a module. The module is called file.managed which is used to copy the configuration file from the file server of the salt config node to the target. The next two lines describe the target and the source files. So in line number three, we have our, our target file. So this contains the target path and the target name of the file. So etc salt minion D is the, the location where we will store our configuration file and beacon.conf is the name of the configuration file, how it is named on the target machine. In the next line, we have the source. The source describes from where this, the, the file is being copied from. So with the beginning of the source, we say it's salt colon slash slash, which defines the salt config file server. And then the second part of this is just describing the uh, folder path or like the structure here you see on the left, it's um, beacon and then install beacon.conf, like it's this file here in files. And then last parameter we have to add is make directories, which is allowing SaltStack to create a directory if the folder does not exist yet. That's it. So we have created a conf file, which has to be copied, and we have, to cre we have created the uh, state file, which is executing the copy job. So save this. The next part of this is we need to apply this configuration to our target machines. For this, we will use a job. Just go into the left pane, click config, jobs, 
and then on the upper right you can create a new job. Okay, when you create the new job, give it a meaningful name as always, install beacon for example. Leave the command to salt, just select a function which is called state.apply, choose your environment and choose the state you just have created before. In our case it's beacon install and then save it. Once you have saved the uh, job, you, you're ready to run it against the target machine. For this, we go into our minions tab on the left, which will show us all of the approved minions. And then we have a single minion here in my case, which is being used for uh, applying this beacon. We just check the box in the beginning and click run job. On this prompt, we select our install beacon job leave everything as it is and click run. Before I click run, I want to show you how the machine looks before. And yeah, let's have a look on the machine. I, I logged in through SSH into my target machine and navigated into the folder etc salt minion D. If we look into this folder, we see there is nothing yet. To validate that there is no beacon already running, we need to run a command. Run the command salt call beacons.list. This will retrieve all of the active or installed beacons which are currently available to your machine. As you see, there is no beacon installed or active. So with the configuration, we will copy the configuration file. And after restarting the minion, the beacon becomes active and installed. So once we run this again later, we will see the beacon is being installed. So let's run the job. So if you go on the left side to activity completed, you will see when your job is being finished successfully or failed or not returned, depending on the result. In our case, it's the last job here on the list and it's successfully executed so we can check our machine. Let's jump back into our SSH session. Back on our machine, we will check first if the configuration file was copied successfully. For this, we just do another uh, list here and we see, okay, there is a beacon conf. Having a look into the beacon conf will show us exactly the same configuration as we had it on our file server. So here we see the copy conf configuration. Great. So next is if we check again if our beacon is installed, we will see it's still an empty list. So let's run the command again. As you see, after copying the conf file, it's not done yet. So the beacon list is still empty. So we have to restart our minion for this. Depending on your Linux distribution, this command might be a bit different, but you have to restart the salt minion service. After restarting the salt minion service, let's run the command to list the beacons again. Et voila, as you see, after restarting our salt minion, our beacon got installed successfully. Next step is to validate if our machine, our minion, is sending events to the event bus of the master server. Next step is to validate if your machine, your minion, is sending events to your master server. Remember, we have set the threshold very, very low to send 10%. So we would expect now to see events that the mem memory threshold is crossed on the master server. So for this, you run a command to have a look on the event bus. All right, this takes a bit that you start seeing the events, but you'll see now, okay, the memory usage of our target machine at the moment is getting like 26.7% of memory usage. And this event is yeah generated because we have installed the beacon, which is monitoring and watching memory utilization. Back on our SaltSec config UI, we want to disable our beacon. To disable the beacon, we have to write another state file. For this, go to your config file server and click the create button. Once you have the empty screen, just fill your new state file with some life, choose an environment, give it a path name and the name. It's in my case, disablebeacon.sls. It's important here that you have SLS in the end because it's a state file. And then we use a name 
or we give it a name like disable beacon and then the module we're using in this state file is called beacon.disabled and this module just requires a single parameter which is the name of the beacon in our case mem usage save this and create a job for it to apply it to your machine to create the job go back on the config job screen and click on the upper right the create job button same as we did before just give it a meaningful name the command is sold function is state apply environment whatever your environment is in my case it's base and select the state you just have created in my case disable beacon and then save this job and run it go to your minion select run job select your job you just created leave everything as it is click run now and wait until it's in the activity completed list as successfully our job finished successfully so you see it here as the last uh, entry in our list so let's have a look on our target machine the beacon is no longer active because there is a change on the file what you see is there is an additional attribute injected into this configuration which is enabled false this happens because we executed the disable beacon module with this the beacon is still installed but not active if you want to reactivate this you have to override this back to true and then the beacon is active again always keep in mind to restart your salt minion to uh, yeah override the active configuration and make sure that your events are properly sent to your master if you see this configuration the first time maybe you're a bit lost and you don't know how to configure this and yeah what is the right syntax what are the right parameters for this there is an easy way to get an idea of how this configuration should look like for this go back to your machine log in through ssh and have a look on the python scripts we are back on our machine and to see which beacons are available and how they work just navigate to the following folder go to cd user lib and now depending on your uh, linux distribution and your installed python maybe you have a different python version installed but choose your python version then there's a folder called site packages and inside of site packages let me make this a bit bigger for you inside of site packages you see a folder called salt inside of the salt folder you see a lot of different stuff and the folder called beacon so let's have a look into the beacons folder inside the beacons folder you see a lot of python scripts all of those are available beacons you can use if you look into those scripts like the memory usage for example you will see examples so just have a look into the python scripts and then you will find those examples here which gives you an idea how to use this beacon and how to write the configuration for it that's it for today i hope you enjoyed the video see you in the next one bye for more information detailed videos and blogs about all aria suite products please visit apps-cloudmanagement.techzone.vmware.com or simply scan the QR code to learn more.